Wow, just an incredible fight. A lot of action going on there and some action in the post fight, as you saw as well, Chael. What did you make of it all? George, I am former teammates with Anthony Smith. I'm friends with Anthony Smith, and he's a colleague, co-worker here at ESPN, and we get assigned some events together. My only point being, I know this man very well, and let me tell you, what you saw in that post-fight, yes, that was some adrenaline. That's the real Anthony Smith. Okay, when I met this young man, he would walk into the Rain Training Center in California, Mark Munoz's gym, where we worked at it. He'd put his bag down. He didn't really talk to anybody. He had that look in his eye of determination, but his skills weren't quite there. In all fairness, look, this young man at one point in his career, you're not going to believe this. This is a true story. He was 12 and 8, George, and this was on the regional scene. This is not the guy that ever is going to get the attention of Dana White or a UFC contract, but there was something special. There was some kind of a look. There was some kind of a hunger. There was a clear growth in this young man that people liked him and people wanted to help him now that's ancient history and you're now looking at the top contender in the entire world right now but it is very meaningful that he can compete at this high of a level and stay hungry and i'm submitting for you as much as that adrenaline was going when he was cutting that pro mic right there that's who he is inside that is what he feels he feels disrespected he gets up every single day and he's got that same drive that he had 15 years ago he gets up and he wants to make his mark he is not letting up he's not letting up rounds look to call out rachel you want to get in there and fight, Rachel? You have my respect. But to even call and ask to get that cut, what kind of a present is that? You got to get locked in a cage with Rachel? Anthony Smith wants it, truly. And he is revealing to you that this is what drives him. It was a very big message that he gave because he was speaking from the heart, George. Now, let me ask you this, because he dominated this fight, I thought, uh, really from beginning to end. I know Span had a moment there where he got out, uh, you know, from his clutches. But the Rakich fight, to me, is fascinating because, you know, Lionheart didn't look so great against Rakich the first time. I don't know if it's even a good matchup for him, but my guess is he wants to take his chances and at the very least redeem himself from the previous match. I see it the same as you do. Look, your job as a fighter is to go out and win the ones you can win and try to stay as far away from the guys that are going to give you a hard time. And we all know who's who. We all go in the back and we can kind of size one another up. These guys are a step further. They got in there under the unified rules. For Anthony Smith to want that fight, for him to be calling for that fight because something inside of him bothers himself. And I don't even know, in all fairness, that Anthony believes he can flip the outcome. I think he can change the performance. I don't think he liked the way that he came in. I don't think that he had the eye of the tiger that night. I think he knows that. I think he wants to close the gap more than anything else. Now, that's tomorrow's problem. But to do a call out, like this isn't a massive fight in all fairness. You're not guaranteed your main event spot that you just had over the weekend in all fairness. You're not guaranteed a title or some kind of a bonus. This is personal. Something happened that night. And look, if you look at Lionheart, and please... Hear my tone more than my words. My words aren't all that beautiful. If you go look at Lionheart, you look at how did, uh, well he did. He is arguably the number one contender, has been for uh, already fought for a world championship. This is a main event guy. This was his eighth main event. That is a remarkable career. You bring me somebody that's fought in eight main events on ESPN. George, what does he do well? You're not seeing a masterful boxer out there. You're not somebody seen with a long reach. You're not seeing somebody that's overdominantly strong. You're not seeing some master of uh, submission skills. This guy's a good fighter. He's a good martial artist. He goes out there. He, he can compose himself. He can put the pass behind him. He doesn't look ahead. He lives in the moment. He's a great competitor, and I really feel that he was speaking from the heart with that call out, talking about not only Rachel, but talking about his respect and his standing within this division. Now, with Rakic, he wants Blahovich, right? Like, we know that, but he's already going to fight Teixeira. So this may be the fight he has to take. He may have to fight Lionheart. It could, it could go that way. I mean, listen, don't forget to share and, and Blahovich are coming right up. Rachik is always a, a very good name, but it's tough. He got called out. He got called out in the worldwide leader known as ESPN by Anthony Smith, and he didn't turn the other cheek. Rachik responded less than 60 seconds, said, I'll see you in December. I mean, that's almost uh, meeting Anthony Smith and then upping the ante by giving him a date. So, I, I mean, I think this is very real. Some things... They're hard to get out of. When you put something to write it, when you go on social media, when Michael uh, Bisping comes and reads it to the world, I, I think in some ways that you're locked into a fight. Now, there's some other moving parts. And Dana's going to have to find a number one contender, which is a good argument already for Rachel. Possibly he waits. But the history of this sport, nobody waits. And the history of this sport and the way that Dana White's mind work, if I have two top guys and they want to fight each other, why would I get in their way? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.